As you see us here, we are the lawyers of uh, Waziri Echeza. Dr. Peter Monan. What is the other name? Rashid. Rashid. Sorry, let's start. As we are here, we are lawyers of Rashid Echeza, former minister in the former government. We can confirm that uh, one Rashid Echeza was arrested yesterday. He was summoned to go to the regional CID offices yesterday in the morning as a law-abiding citizen. Rashid Echesa went to the regional DCI headquarters in Nairobi, Nairobi area. He was told that he has been arrested. He was told that the reasons for his arrest was that he had faked his kidnapping. There was a video circulating in social media where Rashid Echesa is kidnapped, he is handcuffed, and they told him that he stage managed that handcuff. A critical analysis of that video shows that Echesa is handcuffed, standing next to Echesa is the governor of uh, the governor of uh, Kakamega. He is there and there are other bodyguards. What if Echesa kidnapped himself? What was the governor doing there? What was he doing there? He's not a policeman and therefore Echesa, after being kidnapped, he went and reported this matter to the police. He recorded an OB. Instead of the police investigating Echesa, Echesa's complaint, Echesa was arrested yesterday. He has not been arraigned in court. It is beyond 24 hours since Echesa was arrested. Today is a working day. The police have simply detained him so that they'll continue detaining him until Tuesday next week. Echesa will have stayed behind police bars for more than eight days. Number two, when we got wind that Rashid Echesa is here, we came, we have been denied access. We have not had a chance to see our client contrary to the provisions of the Constitution. We have been told by the police here at Modega Police Station that there are very clear instructions from the DCI headquarters that anybody who wants to see a chess, whether a wife, whether a child, whether a parent, whether a lawyer, should go to seek permission from the DCI headquarters. This is against the law. This is contrary to a democracy. We have told the police that we shall sue the police by their names, not by the office of the Inspector General of Police. Any police officer who has detained a chaser unlawfully by denying him access to the advocates, we shall sue him in person by, the, by their own name and rank. It is, we are back in the dark ages where people could be arrested, kept incognito, and a chaser could, be, could have disappeared. We are not even aware whether the information we got, whether indeed he's here, or is dead. We don't know. Because as lawyers, we cannot confirm that a chaser is alive. All I'll say, I did communicate with a chaser. He has been tortured heavily. He has been brutalized heavily. And that is what we are saying. It is now back to the old age where torture, which was removed from, from the statute, has been brought back. 
we are holding somebody in communicado has come back where the world cannot know that a chesa a former cabinet minister can be held in communicado so that is a position from here we'll go to the dci to seek clarification who has detained rashid echesa under which law that they have detained echesa without him being allowed the right to access his advocate my brother mr cliff Umbeta. the dark days that we are talking about are now back with us you can see the recent trend has been that people have started disappearing and appearing later dead. Some of them have never been traced. Remember the president said clearly that the, the days of uh, detaining people and extrajudicial killings are over. But then let's question again, are they really over? Because today what we are seeing is a repeat and a performance of the same thing. The reason why we have fundamental rights is very simple. To prevent such excesses whereby a person cannot be seen or a person cannot be visited or a person does not enjoy his fundamental rights. Does the chaser have a, a fundamental rights? Yes. And therefore, does he have a right to a lawyer? Yes. But what has happened here? The lawyers have been denied the right to see him and he has been denied this right to actually see him and see his family. His family cannot see him. He cannot be visited. We don't know whether he needs food, whether he needs medication. Actually, we do not know whether he's alive. Is there a reason as to why they are preventing him from being seen? Do they want so that the injuries that he has suffered as a, as a result of the torture to heal? Why are they going to keep him for seven to eight days? Is there something that they are preventing? This is the old days tricks whereby you are injured, you are hurt, and then they let you heal and they say there are no marks. Remember, it is also unlawful for you to take an order from your senior officer unlawfully and follow it up. You are supposed to deny or refuse an unlawful order. So when these policemen here in Mudaega police station, fearing the DCI, are told do not allow these people to see the, the client, then somebody must pay the price. It's those days of hiding the issue behind the police force and saying, oh, it is the police, it's the government, take us to court, are over. We are taking the names of each and every officer, the ones who have booked him in the OB, the ones who are here currently, so that we know who is ultimately responsible for the unlawful order. Here, straight away, we go there. From there, we find out. We see who we are going to meet. We see whether we are going to be given a chance to talk to, to him or to see him. But remember... If he was arrested yesterday, 24 hours later he has not been taken to court. His fundamental rights have been curtailed. So why do they want to keep him until Tuesday? Can that be fair? Something is wrong with the judicial, I mean, with the uh, justice process in this country. It has to stop. Any question? It is said that he stage managed his kidnapping or his abduction. And we have provided the tip of what he's alleged to have committed, it is not humanly possible that anybody can uh, abduct himself, handcuff himself, then he is captured by video with the governor of uh, Bungoma of, of Kakamega. Kakamega being present. It can't be possible. That is what you are saying. This is trying to sanitize an offense that was likely to have been committed. Had that tape clip not come out, Echesa was supposed to have been killed. And that's what we are worried. Because after the kidnap, Echesa was admitted for more than four days at Karen Hospital for treatment of the injuries that he received. Then he's been arrested. He has been inflicted more injuries by the police. So are we likely to see a dead body of Echesa coming out? Or are we going to see somebody who has been completely disfigured. So that is a, that is a fear and that's why we have called the nation, the whole country at large, that as everybody is going for Easter, kindly put Rashid Echesa to your prayers. We are seeking that the whole country turns it into a national day to pray for the life of Echesa so that he can walk out free and he can be arraigned before any court of law in this country.